Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem insert into a binary search tree. We're given the root of a binary search tree and a value that we want to insert into the tree. And then we want to return the new root of the tree. Also, it is guaranteed that the new value does not exist in the original BST. And they also clarify that there are multiple ways to solve this problem. There's multiple ways to insert into a binary search tree and we can return any of them thankfully. Now before we get started on the solution let's actually break this problem down. There's a few key points to notice. First of all this is a binary search tree not just a regular binary tree so there is a sorted property to the tree. Remember that for every single node in the tree every node in the left subtree of that node is going to be less than the value here, four. It's gonna be less than four, and every value in the right subtree is going to be greater than four. And this property is recursive, so it's not just true for the root node, it's true for every single node in the tree. Now, they also clarified that we're guaranteed that the new value that we're inserting, in this case, five, does not already exist in the tree. That's very important because that's, first of all, usually the case with binary search trees, but it's also important because we need to find a position that we can insert this five in. Now, technically, if we wanted to, we could put the five in the root spot and then like rebalance the entire tree around the new root value. That's kind of a difficult way to do this. Now, the simple way to do this, you might already remember if you took a data structures and algorithms class, but I really wanna emphasize the thought process behind this problem because it's very trivial for me to solve it because I kind of know exactly how to do it the easiest way. You start at the root and you basically keep searching until we we get to a null position. Now, how do you search? Well, you use the sorted property. If we're inserting a five, is that greater than four or less than four? We know it's definitely not going to be equal to any node in the entire tree. It's never going to happen. We're either going to go to the right or we're going to go to the left. In this case, five is greater. We're going to go to the right. Now for seven, are we going to the left or are we going to the right? We're going to go to the left. And now we reached a null position. We're guaranteed to reach a null position because like I said, we know for sure five does not already exist in the tree. So every time we get to a new node, we're either going to go left or we're going to go right. Now, unless the tree is infinitely large, we know for sure we're going to reach a null position. And that's where we want to insert this five into. So we put the five over here and you can see that's pretty much what they had in the output. Now, how do we actually code this up? Well, there's two ways to do it. We can do it the iterative way or we can do it the recursive of way. Let's compare and contrast these two different ways to do this very quickly. If we do this iteratively, we're going to start at the root and then we're going to go to seven and then we're going to end up at a null position. Now, how do we actually insert a node here? Well, we would want to connect this node and add a left child for it a five. So therefore, we don't really want our pointer to end over here because we need access to the parent node. So we would want to stop at the point where we see that, okay, we want to go left, but left is null. So therefore, we stop and we go ahead and insert the node. That's a pretty easy and doable way to do this. We could also do it the recursive way, which I think is a little bit trickier because there's a very important edge case here that I want to emphasize. What happens if we have an empty tree? We we want to insert five into an empty tree because remember, we actually have to return the root of the node of the binary search tree. And in this case, we'll have a new root node. If our tree is empty, then we have a new root node. So in the iterative solution, I think it's pretty easy because all you have to do is create a node and then return it. But for the recursive solution, it's a bit different because for the recursive solution, we're actually handling that edge case that I talked about in both cases. Because in the recursive solution, when we get to the null position over here, we actually want to create that node five and then return it up to its parent. And then from its parent, we're gonna say, we inserted a new node into the left subtree and then we returned that tree. So we're gonna take that tree and set it to the left child of seven. I think the recursive solution is a bit harder, but I think it's also more powerful because you can apply it to other problems more easily. And I think it's really important to understand. So I'm going to be focusing on the recursive solution when we code it up right now, but I'll also briefly show the iterative solution towards the end. Before we move on, what would be the time complexity of inserting a node? Well, first of all, how are we going to measure it? We can measure it based on the 
size of our binary search tree. Let's say n is the number of nodes in our tree. And we could also measure it using the height of the tree. Let's say h is the height of our tree. Technically, in the worst case, this is going to be the time complexity, big O of h, because we don't have to visit every single node. We're going to every step either go left or go right. So we're just going to basically have like a chain like this, which is going to be the length of the height of the tree. In the worst case, though, we might not have a balanced tree. It might just look something like this. Technically, the worst case time complexity could also be big O of n. I like to say big O of h though, because it's more accurate, I think, because h could be equal to n. I think it's more correct to say that the time complexity is the height of the tree. It's also worth mentioning though, that the recursive solution takes extra memory because we have a call stack. We're going to do it recursively. We're going to call a function here. We're going to call a function here. And we're going to keep doing that. Basically, same thing, the height of the tree. So the memory complexity is going to be big O of h. Whereas if we do it iteratively, we don't have a call stack. We just have a pointer that we keep shifting. And therefore, the memory complexity of that will be constant big O of one. Okay, now let's code it up. Remember the first edge case, what if we have an empty tree? Well, then we basically want to create a new tree node, we can do that with the constructor passing in the value parameter that we're given. And this is what we want to return after we've created a new tree. Otherwise, we know we have to keep searching until we do reach node. We know we're going to reach it eventually, but we have to figure out which direction we want to go in. Is the value greater than the current value that we're at, the current node that we were given? If it is, then we want to call insert on the right subtree, passing in the exact same value, of course. Now, here's where things can get a bit confusing. Remember, after we insert into the right subtree, what if the right subtree of the root is null? That means what this insert function would do is it would just create a new tree node and then return it. But if we return it like this, we're not doing anything with it. Then root.write will still equal null. So to change that, we want root.write to be equal to the new node that we just inserted. And we want to do the exact same thing in the opposite case where our value would be less than root.val. I don't have to specify that here though, because we know for sure value is never going to be equal to root.val. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and just change a couple values. We want to do this now on the left side of the tree because our value is less than the current root value that we're at. So we basically just change this. Now, the last thing here is after we do that, we still need to return the root. The reason being, what if root dot right here, when we pass it in to the insert function is non null, then we would basically call insert, end up in this function. And then maybe we'd have to call insert again, going either of the directions and keep doing that multiple times. So in that case, the root actually Actually would not change the root that this insert function would call would not change we would want to return it and then keep assigning it to root dot right that would not do anything in that case where it's not changing but we know we still have to have these assignments in the case that the return value did change which would of course only happen if the root that we passed was null and then we created a new node and then returned that so let's run this to make sure that it works and as you can see yes it does and it's pretty efficient now let me briefly show you the iterative solution so this is the iterative solution we have the same base case if we are given an empty tree we just create a node and then return it Otherwise, we set our current pointer equal to the root. And I just go while true because we know we're going to keep going until we reach null. And the way I wrote this, we never need to break out of this while loop because I'm just returning root inside of these. But you know, you could have done it the other way. That's up to your preference. But logically, this is mostly the same. If the value we want to insert is greater than the current value, we go to the right. Otherwise, we go to the left. Now, what happens if we can't go any further to the right, then we go ahead and insert the new node because we know we found the null pointer and then we return the root. Notice how what I'm returning is not cur, I'm returning the root because that's what we want to return for this insertion. Otherwise, though, if we didn't find the null pointer, then we go ahead and just say cur is equal to cur dot right. We're doing logically the exact same thing on the left side of the tree, as you can see below. And that's pretty much the iterative solution. I'll go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty much just as efficient. In terms of memory, it's probably a bit more efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to see code solutions for language other than Python, check out neatcode.io. It's got a ton of free resources to help you prepare for coding interviews. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.